Perfect. Well, welcome everyone uh, to the City of Portland's 2023 Open Data Day. My name is Hector Dominguez. Uh, I am the Open Data and Privacy Coordinator for the city. And uh, I'm going to kick off all this uh, series of presentations today uh, just with a quick refresher of what Open Data and Privacy is and particularly focus more on the privacy side. Uh, last year's presentation was focused on Open Data. So let's go. So I already introduced myself. My name is Hector Dominguez. I am I'm Open Data Coordinator, part of the Smart City PDX program. I'm, I'm working on policy making and uh, and trying to figure out how to use technology in responsible ways in collaboration with all the Smart City PDX team. So the Open Data program was actually created a long time ago uh, in Portland. The, uh, Portland has the one of the oldest Open Data ordinances uh, originally from 2009, but back in 2017, this ordinance was uh, updated. And that's what really uh, we are working on, on on top of that ordinance and really makes, tries to promote the idea that uh, all this data that the city of Portland owns has to be uh, released publicly, make, make it uh, accessible and open to everybody. Yeah, but not uh, one of the biggest challenges sometimes is, well, what is really open data and um, everything that just comes with um, this freely, open data is what is freely used. You can reuse it. Uh, redistributed uh, by anyone. Uh, so open data is also a responsible way of uh, managing the data because before getting to that stage, it has to go through a curation process just to making sure that uh, there is no uh, private information, sensitive inform information there. there. There are minimum levels of quality uh, and integrity within these uh, data sets that the city releases. Uh, open data is also this bridge between uh, for transparency and and allows public engagement discussions or allows the community to uh, the public in general uh, to uh, to understand how the city uh, makes decisions and at the end uh, the idea is that that can empower the com community can empower local businesses etc. But not all data obviously is is open so what is one of the biggest challenges that we had uh back when we started this this work it was understanding what is not open and all the work started back in 2018 uh we uh, our program smart city pdx started to collaborate with uh, other uh, different groups within the city including the Office of Equity and Human Rights, the Information Security Office, and with other partners at the time, Portland State University, the city of Seattle has been a key uh, supporter and advisor in general uh, around privacy issues. You can see these are like pictures of what we did back in 2018, and we started with what are our values. With that, those values, we actually transform them into our privacy and information protection principles, which was a policy that passed in 2019. Those are seven principles that includes uh, transparency and accountability, equitable data management, full life cycle stewardship, ethical and non discriminatory use of data, data openness, uh, automated decision systems, and data utility. Automated decision system has to do with algorithms and how the data gets processed uh, and, and, and just understanding the whole life cycle for, for data in general, from collection to uh, deletion of, and, and how data is being used. And then data utility is that uh, we, is really two, in two parts, two sections, the city, uh, is going to well this this principle is that we are going to only collect the minimum amount of personal identifiable information and that has to bring some value to the city um, so with that uh how do we implement those principles and that has been work that we have been developing 
from 2019 until now, we are still working on that. So we started with a, a number of uh, like lists, sensitive data fields lists, for instance. The first one was provided by the Information Security Office. Uh, there we separate um, data in, in three classifications, main classifications, payment card industry, protected health information, and personal identifiable information. So our Information Security Office has uh, classify like a number of fields that these are sensitive. Uh, we should be uh, restricting access to this information and make sure that we uh, create safeguards around that, particularly around cybersecurity, right? But we could actually, with these, we could actually be creating a false expectation of privacy because in cases of public record requests, uh, it's on really Oregon law, the one that dictates what we can protect and what we need to actually release publicly. And, and that was a discussion that we had with our public record request office uh, in order to understand uh, all these different laws around transparency that the state of Oregon has, and that we as a local government, a local municipality, we need to uh, comply with. So with that in mind, we start creating like a really long list. This is just a sample of what are the public records exemptions, which means that everything that is not exempted has to be released publicly if there is a public record request. So you can see there are some specific cases where there are uh, litigation ongoing, for instance, some confidential information for the city, uh, security information, trade secrets, uh, social security numbers, uh, etc. So the, it is really a long list that uh, is exempted from uh, public record request. Otherwise, uh, we need to release it. Uh, something that is not exempted uh, that you know we we think it should be really, really protected, particularly now, is when the city collects uh, uh, somebody's from the public personal address, that is not protected. We need to release it. Uh, license plates, uh, except when there is a, a, an ongoing criminal investigation by Portland police, we also need to release that. So that's not exempted from public record request. Uh, medical histories, uh, in some cases, in some cases not, depending on how we are collecting that information, whether that complies with HIPAA or not, uh, which is also tricky. Uh, and we need to connect with our uh, city attorneys to understand better whether or not we can release it. Um, the business information, mobility data, like uh, if we collect or we get like uh how people move across the city how vehicles move across the city that has to be released it's not exempted uh some aggregated information uh electronic devices uh unique identifiers like every electronic device has a unique id number uh your cell phone uh your fitbit when you are doing exercise name it even cars now of course and IP addresses. When you uh, sometimes when you fill up a survey, some services actually are collecting your IP addresses. There is something uh, called uh, reverse IP address, where uh, there are algorithms that I can actually uh, pinpoint where you are physically located just by looking at your IP number. The IP number is the number that your computer gets assigned when it connects to the internet. So those are just some examples of things that are not exempted from public records. Uh, therefore, we cannot really protect them. So creating a realistic expectation of privacy, that has been also part, part of what we are working with. Uh, try to uh, generate more awareness of that. So with the, you see, it's, it's, quite, it's been quite complex. So we, we created some, we call it privacy initiative. It's really, you know, privacy work. Uh, where we are trying to develop new processes, we're trying to develop uh, internal awareness of what's happening around privacy. And right now, there's so much happening at the policy level, at the technology level, uh, the, the impacts as well. 
uh, whether that's uh, applicable just for information, whether that's for devices like surveillance technologies, uh, it can get quite complex. So uh, one of the things is that that we are trying to do is some, to understand better that complexity, not be afraid, but rather to, to take it in a, in a good way. So we are working on developing pr uh, privacy and data protection assessments. Uh, that means that we need to understand the who's, the what's, the how's, the why's we're, we're collecting that information and the where's. Um, internally, we have this privacy toolkit uh, that is still in development, but uh, uh, where we we have uh, surveys for uh, doing privacy impact assessments. We have some guiding documents for managing documents, for publishing data. Uh, demographic information, et cetera. So that's uh, still something that we are putting together. And now uh, this year in 2023, um, our team, Smart City PDX, uh, we are, it's going to be working on that. Uh, privacy impact assessment is really a method for collecting and documenting uh, in detail uh, how we are uh, managing information for a specific case. So and understanding how, what are the impacts, what are the risks that all, all that uh, collection of information, processing of information, uh, like is, is coming together, and and then um, we, we, we try to get some mitigation strategies out of that. Um, then there is um, so we have a workflow on on all these different mitigation. Uh, how we do a privacy impact assessment? We start with a quick evaluation. Uh, right now with artificial intelligence creates another layer while well, understanding whether we, we are collecting any personal identifiable information, whether it, the, we are talking about surveillance technologies, whether there is some artificial intelligence claims involved here. Uh, so all, with all that, those big picture questions, we can actually filter out well, all the cases that are not required to have a privacy impact assessment. And then we focus on those that are. And depending on the case, we actually have a specific question to understand and a specific flow to understand what are the impacts and risks. Uh, so the first step is really uh, having this collection of all the um, understanding the case. So we, we look into the vendor, we look into the technology, we look into what gets collected where is the store, how that is being processed, uh, and, and what are the policies around the privacy policy. So the, the, by doing this assessment, we need to look into the fine prints of all these privacy policies. Uh, with all that information, we start looking into the risks, we start looking into the impacts. Uh, we have a risk matrix uh, here described with like uh, low, medium, and high risks. Uh, depending on the likelihood of the, the specific uh, risk or impact of like happening in, in that case. So we we also can get, uh, we build this, this matrix and um, anyways. And at the end, we just put together all that in a single uh, report and, and very soon we are going to actually release the ones that we have developed for uh, through these two, three years of piloting this idea. And then, uh, well, just to end, uh, privacy is a human right. That's something that we need to keep in mind and remember. It's actually a, a, a right that is evolving as the technology evolves, as our civil liberties, civil rights uh, also evolve. And, and it's actually really interesting just to see this work in real time. So uh, it's part of the Universal uh, Declaration of Human Rights. Privacy, legally speaking, uh, is not a constitutional right here in the US. However, it's spread out and fragmented in all these different laws here and there at the federal, state level, and, and local level as well, like here in Portland. So that creates uh, challenges, but also opportunities. And, and our team, and we invite everyone who's watching this video, who's attending here live, to join the effort. So. Uh, please uh, contact us, uh, visit our Smart City PDX website and, um, and to learn more about all these projects. And with that, I'm going to stop uh, my 
recording and